All right, squads, there's been a bit of heat on Twitter about this one. Upload thing from Ping Labs. Version 7 just launched and it claims five times faster speeds. Now, look, do people actually care about that? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll also find out how easy it is to actually install this thing. And then if you haven't heard about it, it's the product called Upload Thing and it's better file uploads for developers. So what is it actually offering us in the long run? Developer, do we need a wrapper on top of S3? Like, what are we getting here? It costs more. I'm sure it does. They have to make money some way. So let's give it a spin and install it and see what we get. All right, let's get started. Let's um, install a fresh copy of Next.js. So to do that, Gonna run npx create next app at latest. Hit that. And we're just gonna call this one. Yeah, we need to install that update. All good. We're gonna call this upload thing demo. Do you wanna use TypeScript? Of course we do. ESLint, sure. Tailwind, yes. Source directory, yes. App router, 100%. Uh, we don't wanna customize that. All right, let that do its thing. I've got a few errors there. So I'm just gonna just check. What node that? Yep, we need to be using node 18. Let's just swap that over. All right, now let's see here. Do we have that directory CD into upload thing demo? And I'm gonna just open this in cursor. All right, bump this up for everyone so we can see. All right, so let's just double check that everything is actually working. So this is going to be npm run dev. All right, and just double check, sanity check that we actually are working. All right, we got our next app running. Okay, great. So now, if you haven't seen upload thing, this is from the team at ping.gg and Theo and the boys, Ping Labs. So a better file, better file uploads for developers. Now I've done a lot of file uploads in the past and I know how painful it can be, especially when you want to make optimize. I just recently did uh, multi-part uploads for S3. So I know that it's a bit of a chore. I usually use Uppy uh, to do this, but then you do have to manage the backend yourself. So let's see how good this boy is. So we're going to get started. Nope, I don't want to do that. I want to actually getting started with the app router. So the first thing we need to do is just follow this. So we're going here. Let me just bump this up as well for everyone. So the first thing we want to do is we want to install upload thing and upload thing react because we're running that. So I'm going to close the server and then just do that. All right. Install those packages. And then we'll see them come in here when it's ready. Okay. Upload thing, upload thing. Version 7. All right. So in version 7, they've done a whole bunch of improvements to improve the speed. It's actually quite an interesting video if you haven't seen Theo talk about it, just showing how they did the optimization. Now they have their own server um, handling the, so we're not jumping as many times, we're talking to S3, so there's like a middleman now, which is cool. And they built their own, um, they're off serverless for that, so that's interesting. And anyway, so we've got that installed. Now we need to add the end vars so we need a token all right so i need to in install or get a token so let's go here back to the intro uh, i want to get started now sign up with github all right so i'm going to sign in and success there we go we're in our dashboard all right that was easy uh, so here we go so we've got a test app which is cool that's fine i don't care about that so the region upgrade to a play paid plan so it looks like we can change our default region and access controls and this is cool um what's this transfer you up to a different organization that's cool but i think what we need now is a token so sign up and create one from the dashboard so let's see does this actually take us to the right page no so let's go here api keys i'm assuming um can we copy this one? So this is the V7. So they've now created a new token. It used to be an, ah, he what did they change it from? What's legacy? Let's see, it just tell us the secret. But now I've got a token. So it's now been encoded with our location as well. So they can hit the correct server. So that's a quite nice improvement. Um, let's copy that. And I am gonna jump into, oh, I need to create a new .env file. Okay. And I'm going to put it in here. So what's it saying? Hopefully it's copied that all. I'm going to paste that. And then 
get back right back to it. Okay, so you can see it's pasted, it's cut off there, so you can't see it all, but it's .env here. All right, now we've done that. All right, now we need to create our file router. All right, so all upload, uploaded, all files uploaded to upload thing are associated with a file route. The, uh, the following is a very minimalistic example with a single file route image uploader. Think of a file route similar to an endpoint. It has permitted types, max file size, middleware to authenticate, and then on complete callback when uploads are completed. All right, so that's, that's interesting. So you basically, so you could create, I guess, the way I'm understanding it straight from the beginning is you could have a route for images, you could have a route for video. So in my instance, so you could, and then from there you can have different file sizes. So for images, we probably only want a certain or a smaller file size. And then with videos or bigger files, you could probably allow different, but then you can constrain, you know, sizes and all sorts. You could be doing different checks, etc., etc. So the middleware to authenticate and tag requests, that's optional. Let's just start our server again. So npm rub dev, just so it's running again. All right, so let's go into here. So we're going app API upload thing core.ts. So it's source app, create a new file, and then it's API slash, what are we talking here? So they have a subdirectory for upload thing, and then it's core.ts, sweet. There's our file. Okay, so I'm just going to grab this code because you can do the same and just paste it in here. Basically, just trying to see how quickly we can actually get this going. Oosh. Um, let me just tidy this up so I can actually understand it a bit better. All right, so what are we doing? We're importing create upload thing um, from upload thing next. Type file writer. We've got upload thing error, which is, that's just gonna be a type, yeah. Oh no, that's actually an object there. That's cool. Uh, function is create upload thing. Why well, call this F? That's a bit confusing for me. Auth, and then that's a request which is actually not using. Okay, so you can implement your own auth here. You can take the request and then from that, if you had cookies or whatever, you could get it. So here they've just got a fake, fake auth function. So why, I want to understand why this is called F. For me, that's really confusing. Um, just the naming, I think just for developer experience, like knowing F is create upload thing. So is that basically just an upload thing? Let's see if they use that anywhere. Look, if, if it was me, I would probably call this upload thing. Like that just to make it easier to see what's going on. But basically we init so we've created an upload thing function here and then we're passing this, it's like a function almost. And then that function is then calling the image properties. So we got a unique image there and this is the image uploader. So basically a route with the endpoint, image uploader, max file size four megabytes, set permissions and file types for this file route. So we're getting the middleware here and we can say the user is awaiting this auth function here. All right. And then if no user, we're going to throw a new error. And then whatever the return is, is, accept, is accessible in our oncomplete function as metadata. Okay, so you can now pass through metadata here, whatever you needed to. So if you wanted to grab something about the user or, you know, it could be the organization that they're working with, etc. And then on upload complete, so we pass it that function. We're going to get the metadata back. So now we're going to have access to this user ID. You can show them here and then the file and that's going to have the whole file URL. I would actually like to see the entire file. Thank you. See that object and then whatever is returning is sent to the client side on upload complete. Cool. So then you can get this now on the other side of the in the front end. Okay. So whatever is returning is sent to the client side on upload complete callback. Okay. So there's two different callbacks here satisfies file writer type and that just accepts which creates our file writer type which is this our file router okay look yeah that's all good i'd probably name them a little bit differently just for me personally just so i could understand them i'd call it like um i'd even name it probably just file router or custom file router or app file router but that's me 
All right, so that's the core. So that all makes sense. There's nothing too crazy there. Um, create a next API route. All right, so we need to go app API upload thing route.ts. So this is a Next.js feature for the API. I like how you can co-locate this stuff here as well. That's cool. Um, and then we're gonna just copy this. I'm just gonna not type it all out, but here we go. So we've got in create, create route handler from upload load thing next. Um, and then we're gonna take our file router from here, from core. And then we're just gonna call router and that's it. So it's basically just gonna paste in or give us this, this image uploader route. We should have one route. And we can do some custom config here if needed. All right, now create the upload thing components. We provide components to make uploading easier. We highly recommend re-exporting them with the types assigned, but you can import the components individually from upload thing react. Okay, so next thing is we're gonna implement the front end buttons and the drop zones. Okay, so I like this source utils. I like that naming convention. I use that all the time. Source utils and then we got upload thing. And that's TS I'm imagining again. It's interesting that the naming isn't like camel. So, uh, why do you always do this to me, mate? Space is two. Bang. Okay, so what's this doing? Can I find module or its con corresponding type? So why are you not finding that? App API upload thing core. It's right there. And that's our file router. And then it's got a generate upload button and a generate upload drop zone. And I reckon this has all got to do with the types here. So that's cool. Upload thing styles. So wrap your Tailwind config with UT. All right, so it's gonna add all the stuff we need. So where's our Tailwind config? Open that up, grab this. The docs are nice, I must say. That's fine. And then export default. And we're gonna say with UT. So that is an option. So it's basically gonna be with UT config, yeah? Sweet. Okay, that looks good. Mount a button and upload. Don't forget to add the use client. Yeah, okay. So let's go, let's just follow exactly what they got. So they got example uploader slash page. This goes app, exam, let's just call it uploader because that's easier. Dot um, page dot TSX. All right, I'm gonna grab it all and then we'll talk through it. Sweet. So I don't know why it's not finding the paths, which is random. Anyway, let's see if it works. Use client, because it's a client side component, not server rendered here. Um, and then we're gonna go upload button. So that's the button we've exported from here, the constant. And then we have got a just upload button image uploader. So that's the endpoint it's using on upload complete. And it's gonna console log and then an error. Now, let's have a look if that works. Or have I forgotten something? So if we go uploader, is that gonna work? It's taking ages to load. Cannot find this. Okay, so I've done something wrong. It's because these errors are crying out to me. Um, let's have a look How, where that is. Ah, it's this. Okay. That's what's the problem. I don't use next enough these days. So let's see where else we have this problem. At, all right, and then just check here. Do we have the same thing anywhere else? No, no, there we go. Cool, so that's just a little issue that I had uh, in next. That's my, my fault. So at slash. Now, whoops, with the docs, this is using next. I wonder if it uses a different, um, He's used a different alias. He's changed the alias from the default, possibly. That's cool. So they're using the tilde, whereas I think the defaults are the at slash. 
Anywho, let's go here, do a little run, a little inspect. And let's see if this works. So I can upload images that are four megabytes. Okay, so click on this, choose file, affiliates, chuck that guy in. Here we go. Upload complete. Righto, so look here. Um, let's look at this. So first it made a request to our API upload thing, action type upload and the slug image uploader. So that must just be the endpoint that it's gonna hit. And then the payload, what's the payload saying? Files is an array and we've all seen this before. It's got the last modified, the name, the size, the type. All right, and it's returning us an object with a key. So this, is, this will be a key in the storage system usually. Yep. And then you can see they've got all these requests, which is similar to like, is the pre-signed URL, right? So they're creating a pre-signed URL for the, on this, their own. So we'd see something similar to this in AWS. And now you can see here, so if we close this, it's got a head and here you go, you've got your ingest, so the ingest server that they're running and then it's getting the head data and then it's the put request, right? So you can see here, it's got all the pre-signed URL here, a put request, and then it's going to start going to, so this is um, Southeast One region, ingestuploadthing.com. And this is a really cool improvement that they've made now so that they, they control this kind of piece here. So they, um, Theo was saying that you can now swap out any storage provider in the future. So it's given them a lot more control over it, which is really cool. And especially, you know, bring your own bucket. For me, that's important when building a uh, app that I'm gonna actually wanna run long-term, which I hope most people wanna actually do. But when you have something like this, you can then control your own bucket, which is really, I think it's really important when you use a, a provider like this in the middleware, as middleware to make something easier, you wanna still be able to have an exit strategy if you ever do need to. Let's, for instance, you become so big that it just doesn't make sense to pay a middle or a third party and you have the dev resources. But in the beginning, it's really important to just get started. We wanna just not, like, look at this. This, is, this video is gonna be a couple of minutes long, maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and you've got uploading, right? Like to do this from scratch takes way longer. I can promise you that I've done this many times and I am actually, I've just done a video showing how we did multi-part in our app and it took over, the video alone was an hour and a half, right? So it takes a lot longer. So this is cool and I like where this is heading. It's a multi-part upload uh, from what I can see, which is interesting because um, I'm not sure you would, I would use multi-part, unless I'm reading this wrong, but it looks like it's multi-part. Uh, on small files, like, a, you know, multi-part has a little bit of over, extra overhead, which you probably don't need when you're doing tiny files like that, four meg. I could be re um, misreading that though. Usually you'd have a part here, which doesn't show. So I'm probably just reading that wrong. It's probably all good. Um, and then, yeah, it's just uploading it. And you can see here, server data, the URL where it actually put it thing. So this is the upload thing file system. So that is the now the storage. You can see the key here. So if I look at this, grab it. Let's see. There we go. There's my image. All right. So that's already uploaded. All good. And then if we jump into upload thing, there's, there we go. We got our little file as well. We've got the file key and that should match. Yep, so that's that file key there. FAM, yep, perfect. File URL and you can delete it as well. Now, obviously this is all publicly accessible. Like you saw that I could just, I could just hit this, right? And anyone with that URL can actually see that file. Now that is a security concern, but it is available, it looks like, when you jump into your settings, you got your ACR control here, right? So the default is you can set it to have um, be private, right? Which is what you want. Let's be honest, you wanna lock down this app and understand it's a paid plan, great, perfect, makes sense. It is possible, so that's good to know. Set that to private, and then every time you request that file, you'll get a pre-signed URL that you can grab. That's what I'm assuming happens, and I'm pretty sure that's exactly what will happen. Um, so that's it, right? Now, uh, upload thing needs to get info from your server. Normally, this means a loading state. We built an optional plugin to prevent that. Look, I think that is pretty good. Like, I, there's nothing there that I'd care about. Um, so if you wanted to do that, look at that. That's it, done. Um, 
You can use the use upload thing hook to make your own components. So if this button doesn't suit you, which it may not, right? That's perfectly fine. The one thing I would like to see is if we just close all this stuff off. So I wanna see here is, so we've got the button. What does the upload drop zone look like? And how does that work? What does this do? So if we chuck here. Oh, also let's see, can, do we actually get, I've refreshed it. Let's just see if my console logged anything. What other files do we have? Does it, does it handle indie dev fail? Yeah, let's, let's get this one up. I like that animation and stuff. That's really cool. Here we go. So we got a console log and we got our files, right? So now what we could do is we can actually just go and show this picture. And realistically, this should also be, we would have also seen in here. Yeah. See, here we go. We got our console logs from our handle upload action, right? And it's cool here. They've actually got all these logging here. That's really cool. File URL, uploaded file data. So what you could do now is obviously we want to store this in our app as well. So when the file's uploaded, we would store that against our um, app itself so that we have like, you know, if you had an image record so that you can grab it and then you can just get and store these keys and stuff, probably even the full URL just depends how like if this if this upload thing uh, URL ever changes so it might be useful to just store that whole URL or possibly the key the, the key might be enough I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure I'd have to look into that further but then you store that inside of your app and then we can then when we like have a user and you can assign that to the user image right so you create I would probably create depending on the types of files here I'd probably create an entity in my app called images um, and then from there I'd have store this data similar to how rails um, and active storage works so i'll just quickly give you a look at how we do it in in clipflow in rails so we have media files so depending on the file type that you're doing so media files and then thumbnail so for instance we're creating a thumbnail we'd assign it to a project inside of next and then we'd store this kind of information right and rails has the uh, active storage blobs and upload things results are similar to this, right? So you have a key, right? So they have a key, I'd grab a key and I probably store the key and then do something here. And I'm just, look, it just depends on how they're gonna handle this in the long run, if this URL changes or not. So possibly you're gonna need to store this URL as well so that you can just grab it quickly. Um, but then also like storing, you know, image type, file size. So if you wanna show any of that in your app without having to hit upload thing again, I would recommend storing that in a, something like this, very similar. So, you know, service name, upload thing. You can follow these very these conventions like pretty much the same. And then that way you can link that that image asset to your user or your, you know, whatever you're building. If you're building a project, it could have images, etc., etc., etc. But you're getting all this stuff here, right? So this is the stuff we want. We can pass through variables as well. So if we you know in our custom data, if we'd pass through, you know, um, anything else on client upload complete. I wonder, I'm sure there's a way with an, up, here we go. Upload button, route options, input, output. So I'm sure you can pass through more variables through here. So let's have a look at uh, their button. Um, where are you? Upload thing, react, upload button component, on before begin upload, on upload begin. So it's got a whole bunch of callbacks, which is cool. So yeah, mate, to be honest, looks really good. And I love their docs, super simple to get going. Here's the drop zone, away you go. Look, this looks very familiar, it looks like uppy. Uh, click this guy, what do we have here? Here we go, there's our upload one that we recently did. Now, did I set, I didn't think I set that up properly. Let's see, did we get that? I don't think so. No. So I need a set. Why did that not work? Upload drop zone. I'm probably doing something wrong. Oh, you have to hit the upload button. That makes sense. All right, let's check here. There it is, sick one. And if you click on that, it opens up in a new tab. Boom, there you are. 
All right. Well, look, I actually would say to you that upload thing does not suck. And it's very good for it. Like, you know what? If you're starting up and you just want to get uploads happening in five seconds, five minutes, I should say, this is a great opportunity, a great option. Like, and then pricing. Also, this video is not sponsored by them, just to let you know. I just saw this on Twitter. People just throwing hate left, right, and center, which just never makes sense when there's actually people just sometimes just amaze me. But anyway, I wanted to give a shout out because they've done great work. A hundred gigabyte app, right? So you have a hundred gigs of files. So now look, this is not for um, for me, I guess with video, because it's like, I would chomp this up so fast, like two, three gigabyte videos. You're only gonna get a couple of those, $10 a month. Now that includes the storage. So that actually is not that bad. So if we go and have a look at S3 um, pricing, right? Now, there's a few things to consider with S3. So let's have a look at straight up S3. And it needs to be in Sydney, because it doesn't, doesn't even look like they charge you different on the region from what I can see. So it's 10 U dollars US, right? So for Sydney, standard tier is what we're gonna need to use. Or probably actually, to be honest, it's gonna be intelligent tiering we're gonna need here. So it's per thousand requests. This isn't even the actual data. This is actually just the requests. So we need to look here, first terabyte a month. So it's 0.025 per gig and you're gonna have a hundred gig. So it costs $2.50 to host that in pure S3, right? So, it's, so upload thing is four times more expensive, okay? So let's say it's $2.50 uh, for S3. Now, you also have to remember, we need to do, so we need to also have monitoring. I use intelligent tiering so that it can, especially, you know, files aren't accessed it often it could get drop it down. So we end up paying a little bit less over time, but, you're also gonna pay your retrieval costs. Now, if you're dealing with big files uh, and stuff, this gets very can get very expensive very fast. So we have to pay for that as well. Now, you also then have to manage, and there's another thing. So for me, when you're dealing with something like this, you need to uh, have, at minimum, I think, as well as you can have accelerate, accelerate endpoint or the S3 acceleration endpoint, right? So that is going to cost you more money to be able to, like, so for instance, when you use that, if users are outside of your primary bucket region, Amazon has a whole bunch of networking and setup there so it can increase upload speed. So we have that enabled, right? But as you can hear, as I'm talking, you can just go, man, there's more and more things to understand. When you want to serve these assets, you need to probably have them through CloudFront. You don't want to be sharing this through straight S3, add another cost and complexity. Now, who's maintaining this? Do you know how to use this AWS? Do you know how to use any of the other services? I don't know, but it just takes time. Like, and all these things are another piece of management. In the beginning, what you wanna do is you wanna be able to build something. You wanna get uploads working. You don't wanna think about it that much. You wanna know you can get out. For me, I always recommend that. If you're gonna use a tool that's a third-party tool, always think, how do I exit this? Because I've done this many times. As your app gets bigger, you know, now it actually makes sense to be paying less per S3, but to be honest, we don't know what this looks like. Maybe as you go into, you know, terabytes of data, this price comes down and I'm sure it does. So I'd love to hear um, from the team what that actually looks like in the future, you know, cause it could be, you know, hundred gigs when you're doing a video storage app is gonna get eaten up very fast. But if you just use log um, storing user photos or something, look, $10 a month, so yes, it's four times the price, it's $7.50, but what can you buy with $7.50? You can get a coffee or two a month and you saved all that time. What is your time worth? And a lot of indies that I know are looking or struggling to find time. So if you can get an upload working in five to 10 minutes and you're not spending a weekend doing it, maybe you can build some more features. Maybe you can spend that time marketing and it's a great way to spend money. Now you get users and you grow, awesome. And shout out to this is, Two gigabytes is free. So when you're experimenting, it costs you zero dollars. They're, they're gonna cover that cost. You don't have to sign up for an AWS account. You, you can use your um, Versal free tier. Look, it's costing you nothing. I like this. I do like this. I think they've done a really good job here. The the new speeds, and one thing I wanted to call it, so many people on Twitter saying, oh, you're building things. Another, um, one of the things was like, another thing that devs think matters, where it doesn't, to users. 
you know what? Users do care about upload speeds. They 100% do. We built a, you know, we're building ClipFlow. We have our editors uploading large video files. Guess what? Within the first couple of weeks, it was like, hey, it's taking really long to upload these files because we were using single um, connection to upload ter uh, gigabytes of files from a different country into our Australian bucket. Guess what? That took time and effort and energy to implement the workarounds, which you could just, that's all being done for you by someone else, right? So, and they do care. Like they really do. Users get frustrated with those things. I've seen it so many times, especially when you're dumping, like for instance, we had a real estate marketing app, you're dumping 30 meg photos and you're dumping 40 of them at once. You just go bang, send it. You want this to be fast. One thing I think for a future app or I'd probably want to look into too as well is how do you do server uploads? Um, that's probably something that I'd want to understand as well. Like if you were, you had a file already, let's be in, you had an integration from another service and that file hit your server and you wanted to just send it to upload thing. How does that work? I'm, I'm sure that there's a way to do it. I haven't had a look at that. Um, so you can, I'm sure they have it there. But yeah, that's another thing that you also want to consider. But overall, I think this is a great option for uploads instead of having to learn UPI, learning how to S3 pre-sign endpoints, learning how to, you know, serve it through CloudFront, all that kind of work. Just focus on the thing. This isn't a, in the end of the day, this isn't a feature that's going to differentiate your product, how you upload. No one cares. They just want to upload the file and move on with their life. So if you can do that the quickest and fastest and most, you know, secure way, use something like this. This is cool. I actually think this is cool. He's been talking about it for a long time. I really wanted to check it out. So hopefully you guys followed along and had a look at it. It's super easy to get started. Give it a whirl and I'll catch you guys on the next one.